of you the Tory victory in this week's Copeland by-election is that it's the Conservatives who best represent the interests of the working class voters. But do the figures really bear that out? As Tory MPs brace themselves for new cuts in benefits to the disabled, the pa party chairman, Patrick McLaughlin, joins me. Uh, welcome, Mr McLaughlin. Now, you are the quintessential working class Tory. Do you think that the Tory party is now the party of the bottom dog in the working class? I think what Theresa May is doing as Prime Minister is trying to say to those parts of the country which feel left behind that we've got to offer opportunities to them and we've got to offer opportunities to every section of our society, irrespective from where they come from, if they do the right thing. What was the problem with the phrase just about managing? Because there was a report in The Sun that this is now banned in government. Theresa May finds it very, very irritating. You can't talk about the jams anymore. Why not? Well, I don't know that that's... Uh, I'm not sure I believe everything I read in uh, newspapers. What? In The um, Sun? In the sun, or, the, sun. Uh, the sun or, or any newspapers. Uh, but the truth is what Theresa May said when she entered the steps of Downing Street, uh, entered number 10 on the steps of Downing Street, that she does want to try and... If you're uh, struggling to manage, I'm on on your side. Yes. If, you're, if you're in financial problems, I'm in your side. And that's what I want to pick up with you, because okay. there's a very, very interesting report this week from the Resolution Foundation, working on official government figures, and we can show it in the screen here. And there is the forecast income growth during this parliament. There's the nice bit at the top, there's the green bit. The richest households going up about 4% in, in real income growth. The poorest households down by 16%. That is a devastating indictment of a government that claims to be working on behalf of working people? Well, one of the things that we're doing, I mean, in, in April you will see the base rate of tax, people earning below £11,000, not paying any income tax at all. We're taking a number of people out of income tax. So, look, these are big, all, these all are that, big all issues. That, all of those I, at the moment are factored in. But let me just dwell on this for a second. Yeah. Are you embarrassed by that graph? Well, let's see if that graph comes to fruition. If it because did, there are, you, if it did, there are times, well... There are things that we are doing to help those people at the bottom of the income scale, like reducing income tax. So those people who are working, getting low wages, we're going to reduce the tax that they're going to be paying. But by and large, if you're in the bottom quartile or the bottom third in terms of income, you face a very, very tough few years under this government. And that's why we need to ensure that what we're doing as far mm. as giving people apprenticeships, helping people who aren't working at the moment mm. into work, that's why we've got record employment rates. These are things which will help people right across the board. Don't well, ju judge us on our record, not on what an organisation says may happen in uh, three or, years' time. Albeit based on official figures. Albeit based on official figures, because mm. things will change. All right. Well, let's look at other things that you could do, because £3 billion pounds or thereabouts was taken out of universal credit by... By George Osborne and that has a very very serious effect again I'm quoting the Resolution Foundation but using government figures and they say that a working couple with two children one parent earning the national living wage is going to be 1700 pounds a year worse off by 2020 well, we've got to reduce the deficit. We still have a very big deficit in this but country. But why on the backs and, of those people? Well, be because we're we've got to look at the whole area and we've got to reward those people who work and that's what we're doing. That's why we'll be reducing, uh, raising the threshold at which you start paying income tax and looking at other measures. So those are things that will be looked at in the round by the Chancellor okay. in the coming up to the budget, which is in 10 days' time. Can you look again at universal credit cuts? Well, the... The, the truth is that we're spending a lot of money on benefits overall and we need to, uh, as I say, balance the books and get the deficit down. Because, I mean, Ian Duncan Smith, who is no kind of hand-wringing lefty, I think you'll agree, sat in that chair when he resigned from the government and said this is simply not fair. Given what's happening to people, at the, you know, the, the extra income for people at the top of the heap, what we're doing on universal credit isn't fair and it has to change. So I ask again, but, can but you look at that again? Ian... Ian Ian actually agreed to that when he was Work and Pensions Secretary. He did not object to the changes that were being made then. And I think Theresa and the Chancellor and, the, uh, and uh, Damien Green will want to look at all these issues in the round. So you think it will be looked at again? We, will keep, we always keep all policies under review. Well, let's turn to something else. And this is the front page of the, the FT from Saturday. May faces disability benefits battle. You've seen this in all the papers. A massive, massive cut to the disability welfare budgets. And these are people who are 
really, really having a tough time already, and you are going to take money that they thought they were going to get away from. We're spending, as a country, over £50 billion a year supporting people who have got disabilities in this country. So I think we give overall the very generous, uh, very generous schemes. There are changes that come about as a result of uh, tribunals, and we have to look about the way in which that addresses the, the whole effect. But as far as supporting disabled people, I, I think overall we do, uh, we do very proudly in this country. We are taking £3.7 billion away from them, and again, the Disability Rights UK, which is the, the lobbying body on this, says these new regulations will hit disabled people and those with serious conditions very hard. The department itself admits that this will include, for example, those with learning disability, diabetes, epilepsy, anxiety or dementia. These are people with dementia who are going to lose money under your government. A lot of your fellow MPs are really worried about this. Again, I ask you, is this something you can think about again as a government? Well, we'll obviously listen to what people are saying and look at uh, the proposals which come forward. But overall, we've got to reduce... We are still spending as a country over £60 billion more each year than we are uh, getting in as a country and we've got to look at trying to balance that budget and reduce that, uh, that deficit. All right, let me turn to another issue. I don't know if you heard Gina Miller talking during the paper review about the amendment in the House of Lords and Lord Heseltine and so forth. There is a real push in the House of Lords to get written into the legislation a much tougher agreement for a further vote towards the end of the negotiation process for Brexit. If that happens, if the government loses in the House of Lords, what will you do? Well, we will want to see the, the, how the bill evolves uh, once it's out the House of Lords. But look, the bill got an overwhelming majority, one of the biggest majorities a bill has got uh, on, sec on its uh, third reading in the House of Commons, and it's gone to the House of Lords. The Prime Minister has said that there will be a vote uh, once the negotiations are concluded. The Prime Minister won't conclude the negotiations if, she's got, if she thinks okay. she's got a a bad deal. But we have... Is, we, is it worth having referendum. a fight about this, then? Is it actually worth having a fight? Well, I, I'm not sure we're, we'll see whether we're going to have a fight or, or oh, so, not. So the, you, the, you no, might allow the amended bill no, to stand? No, no, the bill should go through as it has come from the House of Commons. The elected House of Commons... I, I did find it interesting that Gina Miller was going on about sovereignty. The elected House of Commons has overwhelmingly passed a bill based on the referendum which said that we should pull out of the European yes. Union. Both Part, both Houses of Parliament agreed to that referendum. We can't now start second-guessing the referendum. But a lot of MPs and a lot of ordinary voters think that if the situation changes, if there are changes to the economy, if we don't get a deal that many people want to see go through, in those circumstances, there should be some kind of exit route. There should be some kind of slipway off the motorway. Look, the Prime Minister will not come back to the House of Commons slip with road, a deal. Not slip way. <laughs> the Prime Minister will not come back to the House of Commons mm. with a deal that she cannot recommend. So uh, that is what we've got to do. We've got to give the Prime Minister as much flexibility mm. in the negotiations over those next two years, not giving her a backstop to other issues. We've talked a lot about the by-elections in the course of the programme. One thing I think that people thought, whether they were just about managing or not, was that the government was on their side over immigration and could control of immigration. And then they heard David Davis this week in Estonia saying that it was going to be years and years and years before we could persuade British people to do some of the jobs in agriculture and hotels and so forth that EU nationals uh, were doing at the moment and not to expect any great t uh, downturn in immigration for a long time to come. A lot of people will be disturbed by that. Well, we had the uh, figures uh, just towards the end of last week which had shown a reduction as far as uh, net immigration uh, to the country, as, as far as the, the previous figures were concerned. So uh, I think we need to see how that was done and, and not take one s small part of an interview completely out of context because right. uh, David is very committed to the Prime Minister's agenda and that is sure actually is. ensuring that we get control over our own borders, which was one of the biggest issues in the referendum. And is it the case that you're looking at a much more complicated system of visas um, for EU migrants to stop more people taking benefits? Well, I think the, the, the simple fact is at the moment we're looking at a lot of things. Uh, they're, they're being discussed. They're being uh, looked into in detail. When, we've, when we're in a position to be able to make announcements as to what we're actually going to do, then we will tell you and we'll tell the House of Commons too. After Copeland, how big are your ambitions for taking on the Labour Party in the North and the Midlands? Well, I think Copeland was a fantastic result. It was a fantastic result both for the Prime Minister but also for Trudy Harrison, who was a local candidate who brought a great deal of her lo own local expertise uh, to that particular campaign. So um, I, I think it shows that uh, all seats 
are seats that we're going to look at and we're going to challenge hard in a general election. You wouldn't expect me as Conservative Party chairman to say that we're not going to challenge hard. No, I'm, I'm delighted. You're going to set a target. I'm, you're going to uh, no, there, there's, there's no, there's no numerical uh, target. We will target right across the board. And the simple fact is, of course, at the moment, boundaries are being redrawn. The size of the House of Commons is going to be reduced. So we're not quite sure yet exactly where the boundaries uh, will be. A lot of talk at the moment about the Trump visit. Would he be an appropriate guest at the Conservative Party conference this oh, year? Oh, I don't know. I think uh, the arrangements for the dates have uh, not yet, as far as I know, been finalised. But uh, <laughs> Elegantly he's, he's, uh, he's certainly, uh, he's certainly uh, getting uh, the media talking quite a lot about him. All right. Patrick McLaughlin, thanks very much for talking to us.